Welcome back to another basic Game Maker Studio tutorial and this time we're gonna go to the second part about objects. So if you've seen my last video and if not, link in the description, I just showed you that there are very very few things which you actually need once you create a new object and here I will just go into detail about the other things which you can actually do. So. The first stuff I just saw, said, okay, what you need is just basically a step, a create and sometimes a draw and then you're pretty much set and then of course you can assign sprites and stuff. Well, and then persistence. Now we're going to go into a few other things which are kind of important when your project is getting bigger and you want to do some stuff. So the next thing, for example, parents. Parents is quite important well what do you need that for basically if you're having parents that means you have children objects which are inheriting stuff from those parents and why is that important because maybe sometimes you have a kind of a, a prototype uh, parent uh, object which is just giving stuff to their children let's say for example you have like let's say one parent object which is just called enemy and he is just well having some standard stuff like um, HP, um, XP, which is he giving and so on. And then for example, you have different kind of type of enemies and they all inherit that from the parent object. And that's why for example here, you have all your objects and then for example, you can assign your parent or if that is the parent object, you can say plus and add your children to that. So this is those two ways you can use that stuff. Physics, I'm not gonna go into that because I really don't do a lot of stuff or basically like nothing with physics. They have their, uh, their, their uses, but um, generally you can do most of the stuff without that. Variable definitions, I won't be going into that too because this is quite specific and a lot of times you won't be using that. So let's kill those guys here. And then, for example, let's go into the events because here is where most of the action is happening. So, for example, here you have three steps and basically you can have three steps, which is kind of nice. So, basically, you have a begin step, a step and then the end step. And, for example, you, for example, do one calculation in the first, let's say, begin step. Then it will go into the regular step where you just maybe want to change some stuff because of the first one is for gravity and the second one is for additional forces and the third one is correcting well maybe there some 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 other stuff and so you can have like different kind of um, things alarms quite easy stuff basically once you set an alarm uh, timer in the background which run down and then for example it will go into that thing and then for example you can I don't know reset stuff or um, change some stuff and this is just basically like a like a well, I don't even know how that is called in English but in German it's Eier Uhr this is just like a little um, timer which is running down and then after two or three minutes it says it's ringing and then your eggs are ready to take out of the boiling uh, water so here the next thing is drawing and here we have lots and lots of draw um, well options First of all, this is the draw, the, the regular one, which is just relative depending on your position. And then GUI is a fixed one depending on your um, screen size. And then of course you have different kind of ones, for example, draw begin, draw and there you can differentiate and do a lot of stuff. So for example, if you want to do that, the rest you can completely ignore. But what is this mouse key down pressed? And these things are, let's say, kind of limited because you can of course put uh, do your input here and for example let's say you are pressing your mouse uh, left button so what is happening oh for example if you keep it pressed and then you can assign that stuff this is for beginners very very handy very neat because everything is already here but most people will put their input let's say in the step event and they just say uh, if uh, button pressed as you can see and then if for example you check this so most of the people will be doing that in the code but for beginners maybe they just want to have some very very um, easy stuff so you can set it up here and then of course here you differentiate basically because those three ones are the same they are based on the keyboard 
this one if you are constantly pressing, this one if you pressed and this is checking it only once and this is if you left the key and this is registering the stuff once too. So these two guys are pretty good for let's say uh, one time presses, let's say uh, if you want to open a menu or whatever uh, or jump and this is for example a constant pressing to the left or right for the movement or up or whatever. And then gesture, well this is for um, if you're, uh, you're doing some kind of prototyping for um, mobile devices where you have gestures as well. And here we come to the more important part. Here you get all your objects under collisions and then when your sprite uh, needs to have a collision, well you can put it in here. But advanced people again will do that in the step event because there you get more control. But for beginners this is pretty sweet as well. So you can use that of course too. But then you just have a single point collision which is um, if you've seen my last video, so the one before this guy here uh, explained in detail. And other, here we have some very, very interesting stuff. For, for example, for exa you put, uh, let's say, an object at the start here just in, in your game. And then you say, all right, what do you want to have at the room start to be, uh, well, initialized or to be drawn or to be done and here those guys are just let's say for example here at the room start maybe you want to have every time you start the room reset the camera or you want to have some ui elements uh, put in and so on this is pretty good for that and for example once for example you uh, you leave the room and the room is just basically your level and this is no no difference for example you want to well destroy some data structures or get rid of some objects which you only want to have um, well every time being started and then reset so this is pretty handy and the same for example for game start and game end but this is for example for the whole game so this is you can use that for a lot of things if you like and animation end this is basically quite interesting because here you can lock some things um, to your animation. Animation end just means for example you have a sprite you assign let's say what do I have here let's say this org guy and he has let's say he's just happy and doing whatever and for example animation end would mean that for example once you're hitting the last animation bam what's happening there well uh, where are we okay Get it completely lost here. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, for example, that would just mean if you say animation and then at his last animation, do something. For example, reset uh, his state or whatever. These are pretty frequently used by me and other programmers and some other tutorials. So, this is kind of nice. And then, path ended. I'm not sure what that is. So, I won't be going into that one. User event. Basically, this is just specific events which are happening. And then you can kind of trigger them. This is kind of similar to the alarms, but they are you don't have a, like a, a timer in the background which is running and then triggering it. You have to manually say like user event zero, user event one, and so on, and you trigger that. And what is that good for? For example, I don't know. You have your regular movement and gravity, and for example, you're getting hit by a poisonous arrow, and then user event let's say zero kicks in, and then it just says, "All right, you're poisoned," and then some stuff is happening. So. This is what user events are used for. And this asynchronous, you have to understand, Game Maker Studio has some stuff which is running in the background. For example, once you are in game, Game Maker Studio can load and uh, delete things uh, into memory. And for example, let's say you want to have a new instance, for example, you're spawning an enemy or you're spawning some stuff. Well, that is happening sync synchronously with Game Maker Studio in the background. But these guys here, are asynchronous because some stuff you cannot just put in the game just like that. For example, audio you um, works a little bit different as well as cloud stuff and if you go into the internet because you need some buffering and you need to load things in advance. So for example, in Game Maker Studio when you have like sound files you do have to load them. Oh, this is what Game Maker Studio does. It preloads all the sound files. But for example, if you just wanted to um, delete or add some stuff, well, this is where you are. Well, this is where you have to do, for example, asynchronous load and save. And for example, this is quite important, but this is quite for 
advanced users and well this is what basically uh, you can set up in your events and maybe here the stuff I don't know here for example if you having let's say for example my org guy and you have a collision mask and this is this guy but you want for everything the same mask you can for example assign a sprite which is I don't know a box or something or something like this let's say BAM and every let's say object 23 will have a block instead of his own damage mask which is pretty handy for collisions so what, there won't be any clipping for example if you're running around and he has like different kind of animations and different kind of sprite sheets then every time he won't be clipping because he has the same um, damage mask and for example if that is being used for collisions with the ground so he doesn't fall through the ground well that's a handy way to do yeah you can just I don't know paint on the image which you can do um, then well then we're actually pretty much done here so hopefully that was of interest to you have a good one one up indie